and welcome to the thing it's all over. David's back after going to South Africa with Sky Sports to take part in their hilarious sports programme, The First <laughs> Test. <laughs> With David and Jonathan is Europe's newly appointed Ryder Cup captain who's now recovered from a foot injury which saw him go three months without hitting the ball. Much like David Gower on his last tour of the West Indies. <laughs> Sam Torrance. <laughs> With Gary and Rory is a comedian who recently returned from a tour of Norway where he had a whale of a time. He was harpooned and left to die on a beach. <laughs> Sean Rock. We start the ball rolling with our excuses round. Gary, Rory and Sean, some of Britain's most popular sporting heroes have been animals, such as... And at the line, Red Rum has just snatched it from Crispin. Red Rum is the winner. And the crowd are going wild. The winner, Bally Regan Bob. Desert Orchid has won the Gold Cup. Yahoo is second. Third is Jarrah Barney. Desi has done it. However, even though they have earned millions of votes between them over the years, Red Rum, Bally Regan Bob, Desert Orchid and all the other animals have now been banned from winning the BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award. <laughs> but, Gary's team, why? Horse race is not really a sport, is it? It's just sort of an excuse to give short people jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only person, when you see a clip of greyhound racing, don't you think they could liven that up by just putting riders on them? <laughs> <laughs> And if they can't find one, they just staple some babies on, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Has it got anything to do with the fact that most animals haven't got a mantelpiece? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, actually. Where are they, yeah. they going to keep it? <laughs> There's a lot of scandal as well, possible scandal, like, because if an animal won it, there's a good chance they've also been seen shagging in public. <laughs> <laughs> Can animals actually vote? No. No. The animals can't write, Gary. <laughs> Yeah, but this year it's a phone vote. Oh, oh well, well, that's all right. Brilliant. They can't write. They can't write. So they get the phones out. <laughs> 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 vote for John Hartson. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good dog. <laughs> it's that. It isn't it. It's things like they can't pick it up because they've got they've got hooves and paws. They can't pick the thing up. And they can't really give an acceptance speech, can they? It's correct for three points. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. David Beckham can't give an acceptance speech either. <laughs> Red Rum is in fact the only horse ever to appear at Madame Two Swords. It's that thing that looks like a dog in the corner. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Sam, it's golf for you. We take you back to the 17th green on the last day of the Ryder Cup in September. Now, unfortunately, Sky wouldn't give us any film of the Ryder Cup. There used to be an arrangement whereby Sky would give sports footage to the BBC and the BBC would give its sports footage to Sky in return. But Sky have recently spotted the flaw in this arrangement. <laughs> But never let it be said that we at the BBC aren't prepared to spend whatever it takes to bring you top quality sports action. <laughs> now, the American, Justin Leonard, had a 50-foot putt from the edge of the green, which he successfully putted. This left Jose Maria Olathebel needing to sink a slightly shorter putt to keep Europe in the competition. At this point, rather regrettably, the green was invaded and trampled on by the American players, officials and wives. <laughs> It's almost as if you were there, isn't it? <laughs> Naturally, the US Ryder Cup captain Ben Crenshaw had an excuse for this disgraceful behaviour, but David's team, what was it? Were well, the wives complaining about being kept in a bucket? <laughs> <laughs> he's back, he's back. <laughs> when are you going back to do the next cricket bit? Is it next week? <laughs> Sorry, what, what? Are you going to get a one-way ticket next time, or are you going to do the full return? For a day return. Um... <laughs> All the American wives all looked virtually the same, didn't they? They were all yeah. blonde. Sam, what are you backing away from? Come oh, on, join in. in. <laughs> you must have thought about them when you were looking at them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're all sitting there. They all, it was the Stepford wives to come, didn't they? They all yeah. had the blonde hair, but they're what we call aeroplane blondes. What's, right. what's an aeroplane? Blonde? Well, they're, they're blonde on top, but you know they came in a black box down below. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. When you used to play, didn't you used to have that weird thing you used to... When you used to play... 
Then you used to be funny. No, 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 no. He was never funny. <laughs> didn't you? When you used to play that? Didn't you? Have to, didn't you used to have like a pencil behind you always? I did. Yeah. What was that all about? Well, it was whenever you put your hand in your pocket to get the pencil out to mark the card. If you ever got the pencil going up between your finger and your nail, you would never keep the pencil in your pocket again because that really hurts. You big yeah. puff. Yeah, <laughs> have you ever played golf against Gary? He's actually, a, a half. Yes. He actually had his clubs behind his ear. <laughs> <laughs> You play with Colin Montgomery, don't you? He was on the show. He was a nice bloke. He's he's got, bloke his he? wife has got a funny name. It's Imir, isn't it? Not to be it's confused with Nick Faldo's wife, who's called Imir, but not for long, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Was it they were excited, though? It was either the excitement of the moment or all the crack cocaine the American team used. <laughs> you were telling me earlier. <laughs> no, I told you. I, <laughs> I think, actually, was, did he say something about... Was it the devil or something to blame around the green? There was something about that? Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Yeah, fair yeah. enough, well done. Yeah, apparently it was all Satan's fault. Ben Crenshaw claimed that a diabolical aura had come over the green, making his players do the devil's work. Sam Torrance, interviewed at the time, said it was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Yes, Sam, but that was before you saw this. <laughs> That's an abomination. <laughs> That's currently being used as an advert for one of those 0898 numbers, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Football chat line. <laughs> Clean boys ready to talk to you. <laughs> Fill out a cup, why don't you? <laughs> the American team's wives attracted a lot of comment for their Barbie style matching outfits. The European wives were a more relaxed bunch, while the Nick Faldo wives spent the afternoon smashing up his rolls <laughs> in the car park. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. It's time now for our What's Going On round, where we play an odd bit of sporting footage and the teams have to guess what it's all about. Gary's team, it's the all-conquering England cricket team for you, seen here during the summer series against New Zealand. But what's happening to the cameraman? interesting move that uh, plenty of captains would have a couple of galleys for uh, the Tory. <laughs> That's a cracking stroke. So, Gary's team, what do you think was going on? I have to say that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. A woman at the MCC. <laughs> well, at least one member stood up for them. <laughs> Maybe she was just bored watching cricket. She just thought, go and fiddle with that bloke's knob. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. I think more likely he was bored filming it and she yeah. was trying to keep him awake. <laughs> Sorry, keep him awake. What was, was that? that? <laughs> what was that? Is that how you make it The music of the blue veined piccolo does keep you awake. That does keep you awake. Technically, couldn't that have been a ball tampering offence? I bet he cried when she rubbed some dirt into the scene. Really? Can we see that film again? There's something there's something chillingly familiar about it. Can we see that? Can we see it again? Yes, please. Why is there a ship in the background? <laughs> <laughs> we know who that is. That receding Brillo pad. <laughs> <laughs> is that yourself, David? David was. Ivan Gower. Is that you, David? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you three points. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. It was, in fact, our own David Gower who thought he'd have a go behind the TV cameras. Of course, once the match started, he had to remain at his post, giving the associate producer of Test Match Special, Shilpa Patel, the perfect opportunity to creep round and whip his trousers down. <laughs> but if you want to embarrass David during a cricket match, you give him a bat, surely? <laughs> In 1995, and this is absolutely true, David's autobiography was accidentally sent out to the reviewers with a blurb that should have accompanied the biography of Martina Navratilova. David's book was described as a work of immense significance for the lesbian community. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
David's team, it's motor racing, oh, but not God. as we know it. Bloke must be strong. <laughs> <laughs> Are they in a plane now? Because if they're yeah. in a plane, then David is a bright, bright man. Because how on earth he managed to persuade them that that car was carry on luggage, I do not know. <laughs> David, cool star. Oh, <laughs> Did you see Eddie Irving on Miss World actually? Eddie Irving was judging Miss World, and I'm not making up. A week of Johnson was hosting it, and he came out on stage to talk at one stage, and she actually said to him, "Eddie, you must have come across some of the most beautiful women in the world." <laughs> He actually said that. <laughs> and even Eddie for a second thought I've been rumbled. <laughs> Is that a tie you've got on or are you panting? <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a tie or something that Chris Evans picked out of his teeth after a weekend with Joey. <laughs> Do you have a guess? Do you think you know what it is? Altitude testing. Um, well, it said it, it on the bike, didn't it? Well, gravity. Is it just uh, to gravity. recreate what G-forces and stuff testing? The racers, they have to. They're subject the to a driver. lot of G-force when they're driving, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So they're they testing the car, the driver, the whole thing. Yeah, I'll give you three points yeah. for that. Yeah, fair enough. Yes, that was David Coulthard on board a Russian cargo plane experiencing weightlessness as part of his McLaren training. For about three and a half grand, the Russian Air Force will take you up as high as possible and then descend at high speed until they reach the critical velocity when you neither stay in your seat nor slam into the ceiling. Or for 20 quid, you can get much the same sensation by flying Aeroflot. <laughs> Despite his high-flying lifestyle, Coulthard claims he still watches the pennies and says, I often take baths with my lover. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Now, given this week's colossal cock-up over the new Wembley Stadium design, we felt it was time for a special one-off Olympic round. David's team, it's commonly thought that the modern Olympics date back to 1896, but in fact, the Olympics, with a K, have been going since 1612 in the Cotswolds. And here is one of the top events. was of course the ancient art of shin kicking. What we want to know is what other events take place at the Olympics with a K. Three points if you get one. I believe the, the first actual Olympics, wasn't it? It was uh, exactly the beginning of this millennium and it, and it was hosted by Michael Aspel <laughs> and all the contestants stayed by the nearby Ye Holiday Inn <laughs> where they had a choice in the rooms of mead or diet mead and they could go for the soft or the hardcore pornographic tapestries. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried to knock one out at one of those hotel <laughs> You were telling me, Sam, before the show, you were telling us about a mate of yours. Come on, Sam. Sam, you never give us a name. Come on, tell us the story. Well, it's actually a true story. But that uh, he was playing the pro arm down at Walton Heath, and he was getting the train from Victoria Station. He was late, so he was running to the train, and uh, he'd have carrying a few beers the night before, and he, he actually tried to pass wind on the way down, but unfortunately, he followed through. So, <laughs> To save himself embarrassment, he was passing, I don't know, Marks and Spencers, whatever, so he dived straight in there, bought a pair of trousers, paid for them, ran out, straight down the road, got on the train. So he goes straight to the toilet, whips the lot off, doesn't know what to do, so he just throws them out the window. <laughs> Gets himself all cleaned up, beautifully, opens up the bag with the new trousers, and there's a cardigan in it. <laughs> <laughs> The other story you told us is your mate. Yeah, Sam, we want the other story. <laughs> yeah, we can go out. Go out. Sam, go I go promise go. we won't no, use it in the show. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell the story, OK? Yeah. It's a brilliant story. He tells a story. A friend of his is in the hotel room, must be such a tight bloke, whoever he is, he's watching the hotel pool, wanting to take it back for his mate. So he got out his camcorder <laughs> and he's filming the pool on the TV. When he gets to take a kiss or two, what he didn't realise is, in the TV is a reflection of him knocking one out. <laughs> That's your story, Sam. Yeah. Of course, oh, 
so often when we tell embarrassing stories about ourselves, we pretend it happened to another person. <laughs> As you just did. As I just did, Sam. <laughs> if you need me to cover for you, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Olympics with a K. Um, yeah. Hey, was there a special Olympics with a K in which uh, plague victims went around on barrows very quickly? <laughs> <laughs> they deserve a right to participate as much as any other medieval peasant. Like a five mile race or something? How do you know that? Ah! I'll give you a right. for that. Well, yeah. well, well done. done. Yeah. You could have had back swording, spurning the bar, the sack race, the standing jump, putting the shot, throwing the sledgehammer, bowling for a pig, dwile flonking, <laughs> and the ladies smock race. <laughs> they also used to have dressage, but that was just too stupid. <laughs> In the first ever games, the fast running race was so close that there was a dispute over who'd won. The judges had to wait two years to check the tapestry for the result. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gary's team, we have a different games for you. It's an annual event held in America called the Generation X Games, aimed at, to use their jargon, way cool dudes and urban slackers. Or, to use our jargon, work shy tossers. <laughs> Here are some of the events. What a statement it makes. This is one of the few sports, Mike, where women can actually compete with men at the same level. <laughs> <laughs> now, in case you're worrying, no one was seriously hurt in those games, apart from some rich Americans. <laughs> you saw sky surfing, rollerblading and the street luge there, but three points once again if you can guess any of the other events. That's that weird, that sort of dangerous extreme sports, isn't it? Like yeah. bungee jumping, skydiving, and they say they do it because they've like declared war on gravity, haven't they? Like, mm. you know, I can fly, man. Mm. And they say they do it for the buzz and the thrill, but I think the real reason they do it is because they're shit at football. <laughs> They're, they're very odd, aren't they? They're, they're odd sports because they basically just revolve around falling. You know, different. I mean, women, of course, women are as good as men because anyone can just fall. No <laughs> <laughs> the English couldn't, English couldn't do sports like that, could they? Well, we no. have, they have bungee jumping, we have cue jumping, <laughs> photocopying. <laughs> <laughs> they're not real sports, are they? They're sort of pointless, stupid sports like Scottish football. <laughs> You're Scottish, are you, sir? Absolutely. I thought you were Mexican. <laughs> Skateboarding or mm. Clinton yeah. sucking. <laughs> no, I'll give you three points. Without for skateboarding. Inhaling. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other main events are barefoot water jumping in trick jump and wake slalom disciplines, bum jumping, BMX riding, skateboarding, downhill inline skating, and aggressive skating. We did ring the Aggressive Skating Association to find out why it's so called, but they told us to piss off and slam the phone down. <laughs> British teams have traditionally done badly at the Generation X Games, although in 1992 a gold medal in the Street Luge event was won by Compo, Foggy and Clegg in a bath. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. In this next round, we blindfold our regulars in the name of entertainment and ask them to play Field the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're up first. Blindfolds on. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? What a reception. It's not Chris Eubank, is it? <laughs> OK, your time starts now. <laughs> uh, he's got a very cheap watch. <laughs> What's this? I smell pine. <laughs> What's this? What's this? Hang on. Oh, hairy legs, Roy. Hairy legs. Billie Jean King. <laughs> uh, no, no pipe. Feel the head, if that's what it is. Tennis player. 
Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can't be Tim Henman. This is the fourth round, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me think. Tennis player. Uh, it's not McEnroe, is it? John McEnroe, no? No, no, he's got hair. Had a small part in Ryan's daughter. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Who else wears a headband? Who a headband? Uh, Pat uh, Cash? Or? Yeah! Oh. Very good, three points, okay, David and Jonathan. Yeah. Off you go. Nice to have a proper sportsman on the show, isn't it? <laughs> You know, like one who runs around and not just doesn't wear like white trousers and <laughs> fannies around in hotel rooms. <laughs> That's a lot of pent up frustration coming out there. I thought he was going to try and hit you but just missed. <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest? Please. Your 90 seconds start now. What's that? <laughs> well, that's not a good one. Fight! Fight! <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, what? <laughs> this, this one's made of straw. Hang on. A... <laughs> it's the Wicker Man. It's... <laughs> David, take your shirt off. We'll have a pagan festival. <laughs> he's got, he's yeah. got Edward Woodward locked in his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he does, but I'm going to smoke him after the show. <laughs> Yeah, it's good gear down here, David, I'm telling you. <laughs> you've got, you got a light. Nick's got a light. You've got a light. That's your style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a shin kick. It's a shin kick. It's a shin kick. Yeah. John and Stuart Webb. Two of them. I didn't know they were close. I don't know. Oh, you're shooting. OK, at the end of that round, David's team have 12 points and Gary's team have 12 Ooh. points. Oh. Yeah. So, somewhat predictably, we end with the name game. The team in front goes first, which is neither team, so I think we'll let David's team go yes. first. Yes. Pass those on to Jonathan <laughs> for me, please. <laughs> You're in safe hands, Sam. Right. 90 seconds to get Hold as on, many wait, names just give us a chance. Start oh. yet. 90 seconds to get as many names as you can, starting now. British racing driver, we saw him earlier. He's got a big chin like an old ironing board. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. uh, <laughs> Spanish golfer. Uh, oh, yeah, you said him, Garcia, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this guy is a cricketer, South African. He's a fast bowler, although to our boys, everyone looks like a fast Donald's. bowler. Uh, Donald, there you go. Donald. Donald. Yorkshire umpire, I believe this guy is. Um, he lives yeah. alone. Oh, yeah, there you yeah, go. Dickie Burr, that's yeah. it. That's um, all you need to say. Man, US oh. golfer, this guy's a golfer. If you're angry with him, you would say, he Tom calls Lehman. himself a man of God. Tom Lehman. My wife's accused me of this many, many times when she finds me alone in my office late at night. He was a gymnast, I think. A second one, remember in Goodfellas when Joe Pesci gets his bloke's head, he gets it in the thing and he squeezes it very yeah. tight. Okay, that's the second name. First name, The Engine. Something The Engine. Something The Engine. Thomas. No! That's Thomas the Engine. No, the other one. No, the other one. Can we pass? No. Oh, well, okay. First one, it's a Welsh name and you'd go, if you're saying you had something, you would say... If you say, you, if I said you had a big one, you might reply, yes, a big Ivor, one. Ivor. Ivor, there you go, Ivor. Okay. This one, in Sylvester and Tweety Pie, he used to say, I taught, I toy. Pretty cow. There you go, that's the second name, very nearly. <laughs> right? First name, Someone King, played by Peter Wingard in Department X. Jason, Jason. There Pitt. you go, Jason Putty Fat, they got it. Right. Uh, she's a pentathlete and her father makes exceedingly good cakes. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Very good. It's a Welsh name, is it Taffy? <laughs> Eight points will do it for you. Pass this to Rory, please. How much more 90 seconds starting now. Uh, horse, murder backwards. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, tennis player, <laughs> biblical bloke, built an ark. Noah. No. Yeah. Yannick Noah. Yeah, 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 very good. Um, play, you, plays for Southampton, first name is a girl's name, he's a Latvian. Marion Pahar. Very good. This is, um, sounds like somebody who eats some, eats other people, not Monica Levinsky. Cannibal. But, that's right, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, children's programme, Something Grove, set in Newcastle. 
Biker. Paul, yeah, second Paul. name, uh, Paul, Paul. Holmes Paul. Detective. Holmes Detective. <laughs> First Sherlock name, Biker. Yeah, Biker Sherlock, correct. Oh. Um, this is uh, a card from your uncle saying he can't make your wedding. Uh. Many, many apologies. Um, <laughs> First, first, first name, one of these. Uh, but Gary, look, what's that? What's Mike. that? Yes, my, uh, so what's this? Big really? fat gut. Fat, fat, Mike Fat, and the last the part of the second name, relations, an old word relations. Your Relation. kith, kith, kith and kin, Mike Fat Kin, very good. Uh, <laughs> Beardsley had this Christian name. Peter. The second name, not very serious, sounds like a dolphin as well. Peter. Peter Flatulent. Trivial. <laughs> dolphin, famous dolphin. <laughs> flippant, Peter Flippant, yeah. Um, this is. Um, the crossword. This is. I'll kind of that one. Oh, here's one. Uh, <laughs> all right, then. For Spanish, travieso. Uh, What's that? Uh, naughty. Yeah, very good. And uh, <laughs> second name is. Hold the roll. Well, the scores are in fact level, but I'm going to deduct a point for passing <laughs> on Sebastian Grosjean. I didn't oh. pass, and I had some very, very hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> Yorkshire cricket umpire. Superb. <laughs> Either the engine. <laughs> <laughs> you can argue all you like, but bad luck. The winners this week are David's team. Thank you. Sean, David, Jonathan and Sam, we're all off to get tooled up for the next Ryder Cup. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over, it is now. The commercials you just won't believe. Joe Brand's got another collection next on BBC One.